Pennsylvania. And this is an antique store in the first floor and a renovated ballroom upstairs. And they've been doing uh, Motown, doo wop. Uh, amazing, yeah. amazing. Big from the Bronx, you're a Yankees fan? Yeah, well, no, no, no. Believe it or not, I'm a Tiger fan. My mom sewed for the Yankees. She, right? yeah, she did the uniforms for them. So I got, when I was a kid, yes, they were my favorite. I got to meet Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, Yogi Berra was a friend of my dad's, and so a lot of those guys growing up, you know, the Yankees were the only team I knew. <laughs> when we moved out to Detroit, I uh, really enjoyed it. What um, time so period? What time period was this? 55 uh, okay. through, and I was 11 then, and um, never sang before that. Never sang in New York, mm. and met a guy in uh, Detroit named Ed Kaminsky. And Eddie had a great, great um, uh, record collection, all R&B records. First time I ever heard James Brown. Wow. And I just loved the music. And the more I listened to it, the more I liked it. So um, Eddie and I used to listen to the radio all the time and listen to records all the time. And we decided, we started singing. And I found out I can harmonize. I don't even know how I did that, but I did. <laughs> <clears throat> so we'd harmonized together. <clears throat> we sang a lot of um, um, Everly Brothers then, and then we sang a lot of the R&B songs, you know. So uh, we eventually got a group together. It was called the Parisians. And then we went from the Parisians to the Captives to Reflections. And, I never forget this, it was in, I think, 61, somewhere around there, maybe 60, I'm not sure. Uh, we did a show with Patsy Cline, um, Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis, and us, but we were live. They would come in, you know, sing with their records, except Jerry Lee, he sang at the piano. But um, we went in there and um, Patsy Cline loved our group. She says, I really love your harmony. And she said, would you consider doing a record with us? And we said, yeah, definitely. You know, so she gave me her number and she says, I'm going to be on tour for the next four or five months. She said, we'll get together. And then she had a plane crash and yeah. died. And I was, and I always wondered what would have happened if we would have done it. But she was very nice, very very nice lady. The first record we recorded was just like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. What's what's the base back 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 story of all that? I mean, somebody had to compose it. Somebody had to have the idea, and somebody well, said, "Hey, you guys are the best to do it." Yeah. Well, you know what was funny? Uh, we were assigned two um, two writers, Bob Hamilton, and Freddie Gorman. Freddie wrote Mr. Postman, mm -hmm. and Bob Hamilton basically had. A, a, in arranging and musical background. So they, I guess the two of them both wrote it. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know much about that. And they, and Bob came to us and said, we got a great song for you. So he started singing it and I didn't think it was that great. Because, you know, you're listening to a, a writer sing, which they don't sing. <laughs> and um, we listened to it and kind of, mocked it a little bit because we thought it was very nothing. So we put that falsetto stuff in as a joke. You know, with that do to do stuff yeah. in there. We put through that in there and he loved it. I said, oh God, <laughs> what's going to happen with this record? <laughs> so um, anyway, we never heard the band track. See, the band track was cut at United Sound. Our studio was being built at the time. So we went to um, RCA Victor in Chicago to record the voices. And that's the first time I ever heard the band track. And I literally had a lump in my throat and a tear in my eye when I heard it because I couldn't believe how great it was. 
and we knew we had something. And uh, after we recorded it, it just went crazy, you know. It was just, just went everywhere. Five guys from Detroit back then uh, elbowed their way up to the top of the charts right alongside the Beatles. And we're going to do it for you tonight. Sold us, like I said, four and a half million. Just like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> to us at how well you know perceived it was by the public I mean we knew it was good but we didn't know it was that good and then we started seeing climb in the in the charts and uh, in fact we didn't even know we were on the R&B charts it was number one and on the other chart the the billboard charts it went number six and we never expected it to climb the way it did but uh, then you get, you know, then you get that feeling, well, we do have something now. One of the best TV shows ever going, the rock and roll show, American Bandstand. We did uh, the Apollo Theater. So we did a lot, of, a lot of things that white groups don't get a chance to do. Uh, a lot of them thought we were black. The blacks thought we were black. <laughs> Which was really funny because... Uh, I mean, we had, uh, we did a lot of shows with the Impressions, friends of ours, Sam and, 
And he really saved us because when we went there for the James Brown tour, knocked on the door and they want to know who we were, we said Reflections. And they said, you mean the Romeo and Juliet guys? And we said, yeah. Ooh. Just like that. Well, James come back and he says, sing something for us. So we sang Sincerely, a cappella, gives us five, goes like that, and that was it. Are you amazed today? I mean, yes, that we're still working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we thank Levinsky for that. When he put out that, uh, when he did that show, uh, it woke up everybody nationally. They realized we were alive, <laughs> that we still do it, we're still singing. So that got us a lot more work. Even though, you know, they know us from the one hit, uh, we're surprised that we're still around, you know, still performing on it.